Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about the difference between SQS and Kafka. Okay, so I got multiple comments to discuss on this particular topic. So I just thought to cover this one today in this video. Already in my previous videos, I discussed several concepts related to SQS as well as Kafka. The playlist link I'll be sharing in the description box. You can have a look there. Okay. So, SQS is basically nothing but a messaging service, right? And Kafka is nothing but a streaming service. So, let us try to understand the difference in between messaging service and streaming service. And from there, we can understand easily that when we should use SQS as a service or when we should opt for Kafka, okay? So, here I have just written some points and during our school days, how we generally have written the differences that is basis of comparison and then one component and then the second component in between which we want to compare that are available in these three columns, okay? So, here first point if you observe that is atomicity versus continuity. So, what is that? In case of messaging system, messages are discrete, okay? You can consider each message as a unit of work, right? With one single message, you can complete certain activity. That's what is written here. Consumer can understand each message in isolation and they can directly act upon them. For example, if you are considering this as transactional system, okay? So A may be front end. It is sending some events to the SQS queue. From that queue, some back end consumer is consuming that. In one transaction event, what are the important information available? Maybe for example, account number, then maybe amount, okay. Then maybe amount is deducted or credited, okay, that is debited or credited. So this kind of information, when the transaction is done, so that is transaction time, right? So these informations, if as a JSON are coming from one system and if we are ingesting them in SQS queue, then whoever consumer will consume this particular event on this single event, they can act, they can perform something. The consumer no need to have certain bunch of transactions to act upon something, right? They can act on a single event also. So in this case, the messaging system can be used where each message can be uniquely used for certain computation, right? But in case of streaming, what happens? An individual message does not make much sense. You need to aggregate or perform certain operations on a certain bunch of messages to gain more insights. Okay. So for example, here you can see app click stream data or website click stream data. We are consuming in a Kafka cluster or maybe that can be a Kinesis data stream there. We are consuming that and from there a consumer is consuming those click stream events. Okay. So if you are considering app click stream, a single click event may provide a limited information. But by analyzing a series of click events over time, you can identify certain patterns and uncover the user behavior and use it for personalization and recommendations, right? So I hope you can easily understand streaming as the name suggests that continuous flow of data or stream of data. So in most of the streaming use cases, an individual message does not make much sense or have very little information. To get more insights, we need to aggregate or perform certain operation on a bunch of data. Okay. So I hope you are getting it in which use case we should opt for messaging services like SQS and in what use case we should opt for MSK, Kafka cluster or maybe Kinesis data stream, etc. Then the next point of difference or basis of comparison is period between occurrence of messages. So in case of messaging system, it not at all very continuous. Anytime the event may appear, it is not like continuously or based on certain time interval or at least roughly with this much time interval, the data will be coming. If that kind of assurance is not there, the data can come randomly at any time, then we can opt for messaging service. But in case of streaming, as the name itself suggests, it is continuous flow of data. So that's why this particular picture is showing. If I just zoom this little bit, here you can see that stream in nature generally looks like this continuous flow of water right so in case of streaming activities suppose we want to use kafka or kinesis then in that particular use case we should have a continuous flow of data then only in that particular use case kafka or kinesis this kind of streaming service usage will be meaningful okay so now coming to another point that is direct action versus inside generation okay so what is that that in case of messaging system, it enables direct action based on individual message. That is, as soon as you are getting some transaction events like this, the consumer can directly act upon them, right? But in case of streaming use cases, 
it focuses on aggregating and processing messages to generate insights and facilitate more complex operation okay like for example if you are using kinesis data stream then you can use sql or flink with kinesis data analytics to perform certain complex operation on the data so here on a single event we cannot apply direct action in case of streaming but in case of messaging on a single message only we can take direct action okay for example here in case of streaming we can make some graphs in real time to display how the traffic is flowing in our website or maybe for anomaly detection suppose suddenly the traffic is increasing so this particular point will be considered as anomaly so for anomaly detection also we consider a bunch of data it is not like on a single data point by considering that we will get certain insights right so in this kind of use cases we should offer streaming instead of messaging services then coming to the next point of difference that is message persistence so in case of messaging system only one message plays a role for processing we no need to consider bunch of messages so obviously you can easily understand that once a single message is consumed and processed it is typically deleted from the system we no need to store them but in case of streaming data unlike messaging where the messages are considered temporary and it get deleted once it is processed in case of streaming platform it stores the messages persistently over a certain period of time and this persistence allows for analyzing and processing a collection of messages to gain insights and perform advanced operation okay so what i mean to say in case of streaming for example if you are considering click stream data then we need to understand user behavior then in that case multiple user clicks we need to consider together okay so suppose this is basically past event 5 minute before this particular click happened and now this particular click is happening 5 minute after this click is happening so like that multiple clicks we need to basically observe or analyze together to find out users behavior once the user log in in the website right so i hope you can easily understand here it is not like once the message is consumed by one single consumer it can be deleted it need to be persisted in the system to understand the trend or behavior right so in case of message persistence point of view if you consider then in case of messaging system it can be deleted once it is consumed but it is not applicable for streaming system and then the last point is consumer responsibility so in case of messaging system as once the message is consumed it can be deleted so it is not needed for the consumer to have a track that what message is processed and what not because whatever message is there in the system as of now maybe in that is sqsq or sns or event bridge those are not processed yet if they are processed then that means those message should have been deleted from that system right so that's what is written here that once a message is consumed and processed by a consumer it is considered complete and the consumer delete that message from the sqsq and all so there is no need to explicitly track or maintain the state that up to this message i have processed and after this i need to process for the upcoming messages and all okay because here we are not even storing only those messages which are not processed yet those are only stored so consumer no need to have a track that these are processed and these are not but in case of streaming system let me just draw a same event suppose here we are capturing bunch of user clicks now suppose this click event is processed by the consumer okay now the consumer want to understand the user trend or behavior now after 5 minutes this particular event is coming after 5 minutes this particular event is coming so continuously when the flow is happening as all the messages are coming accumulating in the kafka topic and all so consumer need to have a track or maintenance that up to this message i have processed next time if this message is coming newly i will start processing from here i will not reprocess the earlier message again then suppose this message is processed consumer need to have a track that okay i have processed up to this particular message now next time i will process from this message onwards because these two are already processed right so consumer need to maintain this state up to which it has processed okay but in case of messaging system what it would have happened that suppose the consumer has processed this particular message successfully this message would have been deleted from the system then if this message is there that means consumer will know okay i have not processed it yet so that's why it is not deleted from the system right so i hope you were getting it that in case of messaging system the consumer don't need to have any responsibility that i need to have a track up to which i have processed the message and from where i need to process the upcoming new messages but in case of streaming system the consumer need to track this kind of scenarios that's what is written here that it is responsibility of the consumer to keep track of last processed message or the current state 
this tracking allows the consumer to resume processing from the last known point ensuring data consistency and accurate analysis of the streaming data right i hope you are easily understanding these points these are all centered around the foundation concept related to sqs and kafka which i already discussed and in case of messaging system if you consider example apart from sqs you can opt for sns and then event bridge is also there both of these services i discussed several times in my previous videos and if you are considering streaming system then there are a lot of streaming system available in market for example very popular is kafka if you are opting aws as a cloud then you can have a check with msk which basically manage service for apache kafka apart from that aws has its own streaming system which is kinesis Kinesis Firehose, Kinesis Data Analytics, Kinesis Data Stream and all. This whole Kinesis family helps in streaming data processing. Okay, right? So I hope you understood the difference between the messaging and streaming and that itself is basically explaining the difference in between SQS and Kafka. And now next time, if you are getting some streaming use case, you should understand not all use cases are for Kafka, not all use cases are for SQS. Think and consider all these points and based on your business use case, you can opt for the correct service whether that is SQS or Kafka. I hope this particular discussion will help you in your upcoming system design requirements. If you find this video helpful then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you for watching.